Hey, folks, here we are, WFRQ, Cincinnati. No, just kidding. <laughs> we might be drunk. We're here. What, what, what do you got there, a little I, lip balm? I got a peeve already at. Look at this shit. Uh-oh. It's it's overflowing. The lip balm overflowing. Yeah, it looks like a prolapsed anus over there coming this, out of that. This looks like the start of a dog dick. Look at this. <laughs> the old lipstick. This is brutal. The Red Rocket. Oh, Good movie. Good movie. Yeah. Great, a, great app. By the way, this oh, one. maybe Simon the Rex. best. If you haven't heard the Simon Rex app, one of my fave. Yeah. Apps. Um, Ugh. But nothing worse than when a dog dick or a cat dick gets hard. Yeah. That's a that's a day ruiner. Yeah. Like, it's really it's really gross. It's gross. The dog just spread eagle. That thing's pointing at you. Yeah. And then you just start sucking it. Yeah. Oh, it's so gross. It's weird. Tastes you like can't help puppy yourself. chow. Yeah. I know. But hey. That's uh, it's a whole different summer. What do we got here, Peters? Uh, yeah, Ooh, reposado. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Nice summer drink. I got I got a bone to pick with tequila. Yeah. So I, everybody was telling me, you know, ten five years ago, I'm like, ah, my hangovers are bad. They're like tequila and seltzer with a lime, no hangover. Get the clear stuff. Goes down easy. <laughs> I'm hungover every night. Now. I've switched to vodka. That's really good, though. That's good stuff. Um, yeah, I don't. I'm not a big uh, tequila guy. I thought you. I always thought you were always a tequila guy. I love tequila, and I still like the taste, and it's my favorite shooter. But vodka yeah. to me, the Mine hangover. Was Dylan is Roof. <laughs> Dylan Roof. <laughs> By the way, not my favorite. John Wick. Really, if we're breaking it down, way better shooter. Got to go fictional. Yeah, yeah. What about Lee Harvey? Lee Harvey. I mean, he he had one shot. And he nailed it. One shot. Mm -hmm. Just like Eminem. Yeah, yeah. Mom's spaghetti all over that back seat. <laughs> Sorry. Poor Onassis. She was holding his brains. Oh, damn. Maybe the first hot first lady. Uh, <laughs> I thought they were going to say a hot load of brains all over oh. her. <laughs> Man. That was the first book. She was a hot. Is she the hottest first Brain lady? Ducky. Where do you rank her as hot first ladies, Mark? Well, I, you, nobody wants to admit it, but Melania is the hottest. Yeah, Hands I think down. so. Hands I think down. I think Michelle's in the mix. Yeah. You don't think so? I think people give her a pa a couple extra points. I think she's hot. I think Melania is probably one. Mm -hmm. Where's Jackie? I put Jackie, Jackie over over uh, Michelle. Michelle's got the best arms. Oh, my Lord. That's wild. She is hot. Look at that. That's a mil How about that milf on the train on the way here with the arms? Oh, my God. Woo! We fucking we looked at each other. Yeah, yeah. We looked at each other quickly and then didn't waste any time and looked back at the milf. Yes, yes. Oh, she's, my God. She's very Greek. Jackie Jackie is hot, dude. She's hot. Her dad's a, a, an oil tycoon. Yeah. Franklin Onassis or some shit. That that hair is not helping her. She's got the Hillary. Well, yeah, it's, it was hot in the 60s, that, yeah. that uh, Bob. Not a big fan of the Bob. No, no, no. Most and attractive we've... first ladies. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Come on. We're going back to <laughs> Taft's wife? times here. Uh, Laura I... Bush. I did hear that Nancy Reagan was a real Hoover. <laughs> I did hear that. That adds <laughs> points to it. To bring it back to president. Laura Bush. She's got Bush. <laughs> what happened to Barbara? Barbara Bush looked like a, a regular lady one day, and then the next day she turned into where's the beef lady. Yeah, what the hell? She ended up looking like fucking the coach from Rocky. What the hell happened? <laughs> Overnight. Melania's uh, too. All yeah. right, all right. Michelle's not bad. I Michelle's take it good looking, Great man. Great cheekbones. Michelle's an attractive woman. She is an attractive lady. Her hands are bigger than mine, but she's an attractive lady. Yeah. <laughs> it's not scoring you any points in these hand jobs. No, no, God. But uh, I have Melania ladies. is hot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Although Melania, I, yeah, I feel like they all have like things that like turn me off about them. Like first off, Michelle's got too much to do. I feel like she'd always be out doing shit, mm -hmm. like side projects. Whereas Melania would be doing side projects where I'm like, we're selling jewelry in the Hamptons again. I know. Come on. Oh, I know. They always have to have a cookbook. Oh wow. Melania's hot. That's her. There's a porn star who looks just like her, who might have the best porn body out there. I, I can't think of her name. There is something about. Uh, I mean, how often do you think? She and Trump actually fuck. When's the last time you think they actually fuck? Not that often, but geez, look at the cans on uh, Ivana. Is it Ivana? It's Ivanka. Ivanka. Ivana fell down a staircase. <laughs> Who? Trump's wife. Is Ivana. that right? Yeah. Oh, she I died. thought that was an abortion joke. No, she died. 
She died? You didn't know that? Uh, no, no. She fell down a staircase and died. Holy Which hell. is, look, let's be honest, like, tragic. But also, you lived in a pretty nice place in Manhattan if you had a staircase. <laughs> right? <laughs> the, only, true. the only way that's more first world is if, like, a butler push, pushed her and right, then uh, right. a, a Pomeranian fed on her remains. <laughs> Once a dog has human flesh, it can't go back. You gotta put it down. Really? Fun fact, yeah. Damn. I ever tell you the old story? What story? My dad was just became friends with this old guy in the neighborhood and he would go over there and like kind of feed him lunch every day because his wife died so my dad would like go hang out with him to be nice so one day he knocks on the door the old guy doesn't answer and he's like oh maybe he needs some alone time maybe he's in the shower knocks on the door the next day nothing next day a week goes by and he goes you know what i'm going in there who knows what happened to this old guy and he's pushing the door in he has keys door won't open like unlocked but won't open there's something Damn. blocking the door Push the door open. Corpse blocking the door. Damn. Dogs had eaten it. Wow. Yeah. What kind of dog? At, what? What kind of dog? It was two Dobermans. Damn. Yeah, so uh, they had to put them down. Fuck. Oh, yeah. I, I made the whole thing up, but a hell of a story. <laughs> At least I got their last meal. Yeah. It's very there important. You go. Yeah. Yeah, what are you thinking? Last meal, prison. <sighs> It's a tough one. You know, I, I don't even want this, but for some reason, lobster mac and cheese just popped into my head because oh. it's covering a lot of food groups. Good point. Good you point. Get, you're getting like some se- some seafood, but also some cheese in there. I mean, it's I, my gut says steak, probably. Yeah. What do you, what do you steak frites, probably? Hey, that's not bad. Yeah, that's not bad. Well, part of me is like, I want to go something, give me a slow cooker, you know, maybe a brisket, just because it'll <laughs> buy me a few more hours, you know? I think they're getting it. <laughs> Pre prepared. I don't think you get the extra ten. All right, good point. Good point. How about uh, you know I go it... back to New Orleans? You know, I get boil crawfish, mm. seafood gumbo, crawfish etouffee, shrimp creole, something like that, just to go back to the roots. Yeah, you got a you got a local hero. Yes, here here. It's like I... sure he murdered twelve, but <laughs> <laughs> he had gumbo. Right, right. Yeah. I'd get some like you know old black lady in New Orleans whose whose restaurant is struggling. I'd be like, you cook it. Maybe get a little publicity. Hopefully she knows voodoo. She puts. <laughs> (laughs) little pin in the guard's neck he's like oh fuck it got me mark breaks free exactly i like uh yeah steak is tough not to go with i do love a good seafood i you know ooh, apple pie for james dean that's what he said would be these are they were asked what their death row meals whoa good one grilled cheese for sinatra that is such a disappointing answer interesting although you know what i will say grilled cheese is is comforting. It's comfort food. It's never not good. It's never not. You can't fuck it up. Can't fuck it up. It's a rainy day with a, a tomato soup, maybe a dip. Woo! That's a great combo, too. The tomato soup and the... I mean, that's childhood. What else? A, uh, classic American cuisine for Abe Lincoln. Just That's it? A little vague. A little vague. You don't want to leave that up to interpretation. They could come in there with a ham sandwich. And French onion it. soup for Julia Child. She, she, knew, she knew her shit. Yeah. Breakfast of champions. What is that? Wheaties? For yeah. Napoleon? Oh, oh, not what they would choose. Death, Death by, by dessert, dessert for Elvis. Damn. I know he was a fan of the uh, peanut butter and banana sandwiches. Yeah, they do the Elvis burger at some places, which I've never really had the balls to. No. To order figs for Cleopatra. Mm, they were probably exotic in Egypt. Braised pork knuckle. That sounds like a sex move. <laughs> Bourdain. <laughs> uh, Bourdain was, yeah, what did it say? Uh, a braised pork knuckle with uh, horseradish, cervela's sausage, and sauerkraut. Well, that does sound delicious. Don't you want to be international? Like, these guys are like, oh, I was in Prague, and I got a phone call that my wife fell down the stairs and died, so I got to go fly out to meet her. Like, I wish I was like a jet set I'm not, you know, you got to be rich, but like... Wouldn't you love to be like, ah, oh, Sinatra's like, I'm in London, but I'm coming back. Yeah, come fly with me when he wrote that song. That was like a, that was like a pickup line. Yes, He's exactly. like, I can get us on a plane. Oh, I would love come that. Come fly with me. And they're like, you, you have plane access? I know, because we're all over the country every weekend. Yeah. Denver, Florida, L.A., Portland, you name it. But like to have the world be your oyster like that. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, let's go to Monaco. Uh, I got to clear my head. The world is your oyster. Oysters, aphrodisiac. That's true. The world's your oyster. So is vagina. <laughs> here, yeah. here. Something about oysters that is, I mean, it is kind of like it. eating a vagina. It is, you're yeah. You're in there, you're, you're slurping. Right, right. You, you stick your finger in. Yeah, some smell worse than others. Yeah. Some are a little briny. 
I like uh, to put my vaginas on a cracker too. <laughs> I put a little Ritz under there, a little saltine, a little, little horseradish. Yeah. Love it. It's the best. Mm-hmm. Oyster, and you know what? Kind of like a oyster, a vagina. It's always a toss up. Is it going to make me sick? Ah, <laughs> yeah. Am I going to regret it later? Yeah. Could this be a bad idea? I mean, we are we are in Albany. Ah, <laughs> right. Yes, and. Uh, as I, as I reach for my coaster slash fake tit. Hey, can't go wrong. Can we use this tit. as a coaster, you think? Try it. Or is it too risky? I think you can do it. It's like a beanbag chair for a drink. There you go. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. That's a sign of a good tit. That should be how you test it. Yeah. Can oh, I hold man. a drink on it? No, that's a good tit. These tits rule, man. I know. And it's hard it's to not squeeze. a great gift. And uh, she reposted us, this lady. Really? Yeah. Whoever whoever she was. Lentil Trey soup? Parker's wife. Lentil soup, Belushi? Ah, this is from Trey Parker's wife. Yeah, isn't that right? Oh, Are yeah. you serious, man? If you're listening, oh, the dream guest. We want we want Trey and Matt on this podcast. We're South Park. Hell yeah, super fans. Come on, we'd love to have you. We've seen all the movies. We've seen the show. It's it's probably one of the last ballsy societal commentary shows they're, out there. They're grandfathered in from the '90s, so yeah. it's kind of like. They they they're just they kind of get that pass, which is awesome. Okay, now here's a quick because a lot of people say, well, Family Guy, South Park, they can do this horribly offensive stuff because it's a cartoon, yeah, it's animated. What if we animated ourselves as a stand-up and just did crazy fucked up jokes like 9/11, Holocaust, all this shit, uh, rape, race, gay, all these horrifying jokes, but we're animated. I uh, here's the problem. No one wants to watch stand up animated. Yeah. They try to here's where here's the closest you can come, and I think I get what you're getting at. Think of like a ventriloquist. Ugh. That but that's kind of what you're saying. The ventriloquist, right. the dummy says oh, the bad shit. That's right? true. Otto that's and like, George. Yeah, it's like the although it wasn't Otto I think the he was the bad guy with that. No, I think the dummy was the dummy, the was, dummy bad. was a dick. Yeah. Well the ventriloquist dummy is the one who you know that's like the closest. Because no one wants to watch stand up animated, I don't think. Yeah, I guess not. That's a long hour. It's it's already you're already losing something with it being on like a screen and not in person, and then you're like taking another step away. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You get you're not getting any facial expression. You're not getting any real body movements. No crowd. You're probably right, but. Boy, but I know what you're saying. I mean, and and South Park takes it a level further, where it's like it's kids. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're kids, that's true. so you're like, it's adorable that they're dumb. Yeah, and not just kids and animated; it's horribly animated. It's very primitive, and they're you can't see their mouths really. It's it's genius. Yeah, the best. What do uh, you got? Any peeves or Rex? Uh, let me let me do this one as a peeve. Uh, did a guy's podcast? I don't want to say. Uh, He's a no-namer, but he's a young guy, and he, he asked me to do it, and I said, sure, and I regretted it, and yada, yada. <laughs> but uh, I did it. Podcast is the new one-night stand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm like, I said too much. <laughs> um, but uh, I did it, and I'm on his podcast, and he's going, so uh, you know the format, huh? And I'm like, no, I don't know the format. And he's like, oh, I guess he doesn't listen. And I'm like, yeah, I don't. I've never heard of this. I've never heard of you. Why would I listen? This He's- really is starting to sound like a hookup. Someone doesn't listen. <laughs> no, I don't. Podcast no. and one night stands very similar. Both might ruin your life at some point. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it comes back to haunt you. Yeah. It lives forever. Um, so he was annoyed you hadn't done he, your homework. He's annoyed I didn't listen. I'm like, yeah, dude, yeah. I'm here. Like, the, that's enough. Yeah. You're mad. You're giving me shit. And he was like, I'm, I'm, God, I'm half joking here, but I'm like. I, and I won't listen to this either. Like, I'll still never listen. So, like, just, you give me shit. It's kind of like with the, the comedian who goes, uh, the host, he's like, well, what credit you want? You're like, I don't know, just say Netflix or whatever. He's like, whoa! Oh, somebody's been on the Tonight Show. And you're like, yeah, I'm a comedian. Blow me. You asked. You asked. Yeah, I think the thing with the thing is, with the comedy podcast is like, do comics really listen to comedy podcasts? I guess, like, some do. Well, there's just so many. There's so many. Like, I'm going to pass, let me pass up Marin and uh, Rogue and all these other giant yeah, yeah. ones for this little guy over here that I've never heard of. Yeah, I just I know I do know some people who will listen to a little of an episode just to get like be like all right I'm doing this let me just see what the vibe is but sure. I'm, I'm not one of them. No, God no. I don't uh, listen to many comedy podcasts. I'm, I have too much comedy in my life. I'm at the club every night. Yeah. I don't want more comedy. Give me sports or the news. I, sure. I give give me an escape. I from hear comedy. you. I hear you. Yeah. Other other things are good and. 
uh, you know, you listen to a comedy stuff too much, you can start mimicking and shit seeps in. You never know. So I get it. But I do love a good good hour. I, I re- I'll rewatch an old hour of people sometimes. Stand up? Yeah. Like, I, I might not re- watch the whole hour, but I'm like, oh, let me put on Bigger and Blacker for like 10 yeah, minutes. Yeah, such know? a classic, man. The big piece of chicken, Robitussin. That, Damn. Shoot, I don't have six friends now. That's three on three with a pussy half Pussy pancakes? Pancakes or pussy? Yeah. Yeah, no, rock, rock top of his game just murdering so good yeah like sometimes i'm like let me hear the ch- the first part of chewed up where he does the n-word uh cunt chunk you it's know it's amazing it's amazing it's like yeah. it's like a masterpiece and i just want to see that part and that's your opener yeah it's your opener coming out the gate with some fucking heat i remember seeing that and going to an open mic to, and being like you know a new comic around all these other new comics and we'd all seen it we were like can you believe that that was incredible it was it was a great time it's also you have that moment too where you're like what are any of us doing i know i felt that way i felt that way watching burr's new special i was like man he's such a master at towing that line in a in a in a perfect way yeah where he he pisses everyone off a little mm-hmm. but it, you don't feel bad after watching it he makes you feel good yeah it's it's interesting to see an angry comic that actually gives you life yes you yes know? i was fist pumping because here's the problem with a lot of comics they'll have a good a good bit or whatever but you're kind of going i don't know about that i mean it's funny i see what you did there there's a lot of tricks with burr i'm like He's absolutely right, and that was hilarious, and it's hilarious because he's right. He hits all the holes. He covers everything. Yeah. He covers his bases. Everything he said is correct. It's gold. The new special rocks, dude. Oh, it's I so loved good. it. I loved it. Um, Red rocks, baby. Yeah, outdoors. Yeah, and it still worked because there's a couple outdoors ones out there that aren't uh, exactly magic. <laughs> But this one is killer. It's great. Mike Binder killed it. Burr killed it. Yeah. Hour and a half. I didn't get bored. He does that whole uh, mushroom chunk about like having an epiphany. It was it was fucking awesome. I, I posted about it and Burr wrote, "Thanks, man. It means a lot." I'm like, "Means a lot." What are you kidding? It means uh, a lot. You wrote back. Yeah, he's the best. And, and uh, it's interesting, man. Like hour and twenty something, whatever. Yeah, you don't get bored to hold your attention. It's tough these days. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Which is tough. We never say that shit about movies. They, movies are getting longer. I feel like. they are. It's strange. Yeah. All we do is talk about like attention span, attention span, and then movies are like three and a half hour, three hour fifteen. I'm like, what are we doing here? Every show just knows how to keep you watching too. It's like almost like that's like the the medium now. Is like every episode is like she's the killer actually, and you're like, huh? And then yeah. like, all right, I'll watch the beginning. And then you're like, oh no, she wasn't. We we miss. We misspoke, and you're yeah. like, all right. But and something they, else happened. Right. <laughs> they just drag the staircase. We're going to have 12-hour episodes. You're like, we could knock this out in 20 minutes. I think it was like 15 hours. Was it 15? I don't know. Look at that. That is bananas. But it was so good, I thought. We need an episode for every step of the staircase. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That was, It was incredible, though. Yeah, it was pretty great. Yeah, I love that lawyer. Oh, he's the man. The he, owl theory? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> the owl theory. An owl, I mean, an owl killed the woman. That's what they're saying. If you haven't seen this show, The Staircase, uh, the woman fell down the staircase and died. He had two wives who, who died that way. One was Ivanka. <laughs> <laughs> um, that would be crazy if they started dating right before. Oh, my God. And he's like, again? That would be hilarious. Um, no, two wives, which is like, you did it. You killed you killed them. That's yeah. too crazy. No doubt. A about coincidence. It. You're either the most unlucky person on the planet. No, it's this is the show you're pulling up. Oh, uh, see, the, but they made a TV show about it. That's how big of an impact that. Yeah, but it, the, the one we're talking about is on Netflix. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like a docu series. Um, there it is. Yeah, but it's uh, they, they say it's an owl theory, like a woman she got hit by an owl and then fell down the stairs. Yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. all right, this. That's, I mean, this lawyer's got balls. I'll give I you know, that. I know, I know. The owl. There's no feather. There's no nothing. We brought in a surprise witness. <laughs> 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 it's you. It just turns on to who's on first. <laughs> hey, that's not bad. Who's on first with two owls? 13 apps. 13 apps. But I will say, minutes. making a murderer dragged, for, for me, this was really good all the way through. I, th- I, I I thought it dragged a little, but I, I it was good. I'll give it ninety four percent. Some Come say on. it dragged, others say it fell. <laughs> I don't know, but no, it was a, it was a great show. It was beautifully shot. Yeah, it looked great. True crime. That's that's my number two. I think ever. 
Number one, Jinx. Number two, Staircase. This is two, huh? I, it's incredible. It's beautifully yeah. shot. Oh, wow. Only 78 audience were. I thought it was... Oh, that's the show. Oh. Yeah, what do we got for the actual, for the other one? 82? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. better. 82 is good. See, I preferred Night Stalker to this. But I, I think the, the story was more uh, more compelling. It was a guy running around killing people. This is one guy and his wife. Two wives. Two wives. Night Stalker. That guy was a fucking creep. No, maybe it's called something else because it came out like 2021 or 2020. Yeah, Netflix. No, I know what you're talking about that Hispanic guy in L.A. Yes, yes. yes Robert it. Rodriguez. Richard, Was it? Richard Ramirez. Richard Ramirez. That's it. Yeah. The other guy's a director. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He murdered a bunch of women, but he did make uh, Desperado, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, he put Selma Hayek on the map. <laughs> How about, uh, yeah, I, I love the grizzled detectives on these shows who are like, mm. we were going to find this sick fuck one way or another. Yes. And it became my mission. These sleepless detectives who all they do, like, you just think about their poor families at I home. Know, I know. And Daddy, we play catch. He goes, I'm looking for the Night Stalker. <laughs> but it was a different time. It was back like the wife would like, you never see uh, your family anymore. He's like, shut up, whore. <laughs> I got a badge to protect. Or he, he, he becomes a Night Stalker. <laughs> she just keeps nagging him. Shut yeah. up. It was a different time. It was like 1970s San Francisco. What a what a great, like the oh, Zodiac goodness. Killer. It's such a great uh, moment in time. It really was a different time with all these murders. I mean, like, I mean, I think about the pre DNA shit. Like, oh. it was like it's like home runs in the steroid era. It's not even fair. Yes. You're just you're just putting up numbers, and I'm like, good but point. it's they're inflated. That's a good point. They are inflated. Yeah, these guys had no roids. They had no internet, no uh, forensics. Remember that Mulaney's old bit? What was it? He's like a John Dillinger back in the day. He's like, these cops were trying to chase. They couldn't find him. He's like, how did they do it? There was no DNA. So you had, you'd be like, uh, like the head detective, sir, there's a pool of blood in the other room. Gross. <laughs> now, back to my hunch. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of the one how they used to like shoot a... <clears throat> Oh, yeah. the bullets. Were yeah, bullets yeah. free back then? Yeah. yeah. And and you just say it was we did it, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's, the I, Dillinger gang. Whenever I see whenever I see like uh Peaky Blinders, like they that's how they rob you. They're like, It was the Peaky Blinders who did it and you're like, That's how easy it was to get away with shit. Yeah. You announce you right. announce the gang you're in. That's hilarious. Tell everyone. <laughs> so true. Ah, Mulaney. Mulaney. Good. I got I got a peeve. I got Please. a peeve. Please. Let me see what I got. I'll tell you what. Uh, how about a toast to to tits? Yes. New tits. segment: toast. Here, this here. Is, we I'll, we do a lot of peeves. We should be spreading some positivity. New segment idea: a toast. I love a toast. I'll give a toast. Not just boobs. I'll say this: positive energy. You always have positive energy. Oh, you're easy to be around. Hey, I'll take it. Thank you. Wish I could say the same, but uh, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but <laughs> but no, I try, I try. I heard yeah. a, I heard a quote once: uh, "You wouldn't bring your bad breath around someone. Why would you bring your bad attitude?" And mm. I it blew my mind when I heard. It. I was like, "Yeah, that's true." Yeah, because people will come in if you go, "You got bad breath." They go, "Jesus Christ! Oh my God! They're so embarrassed." But if you go, "Hey, you're, you're being a a dick," they're like, "Well, fuck you! You don't know what my life's about. You're better." And you're like, "All right, all right." So treat it like the bad breath. Be that's ashamed good, of it. That's a good point. It's a great ad for Listerine, too. Uh -huh. Your mouth stinks, and so does your fucking personality. <laughs> Work on it. We should do commercials. We really we, should. We could have Ad a side game? biz. We could. Um, oh, yeah, toast. To tits, I want to say this. As you age, the smaller the tit, you're finer with. Really? Well, I think when you're you're growing up, you're like, big tits, big tits. Oh, my God. You know, Baywatch, all this shit. And, like... As I get older, I'm like, I like a small tit, a big tit, a medium tit, a no tit. Well, you're marrying a well-endowed woman. Ah, you got a point so there. So you are, I mean, I, this is bullshit, I think. Maybe, but I mean, look, I'm in porn, and I used to be like, oh, where are the tits? Come on, who's this, a little boy? Get out of here. I want some cans. <laughs> that was my computer. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I'm like, now I'm like, yeah, look at these great little guys. You know, I don't think the same goes for, for dicks. So you type in your, your browser, little guys. <laughs> Hey, little buddy. <laughs> Give me a kid with a catcher's mitt, goddammit. <laughs> and a big lollipop. Um, no, I'm not celebs who have, wait, what, what was the headline? Celebs? Man, you're crushing it. By the way, a toast to Peter. So yes. You're crushing it on the fucking computer at all times. Oh, the ones and the Gotham twos. Studios. 11 celebs who prove having small boobs is seriously hot. All right, let's see. We'll tell you if you're right. Yeah. Paris Hilton? I mean, yeah, you yeah. got to give it to her. I think she's underrated as a sexy lady. Underrated? 
I think I don't think she. You know, number one ever is like Paris Hilton, sexy. I of met her she once. Is. She just oozes sexy. Yeah, dude, oozes. Uh, all right. Well, this is weird because they just they're just hot women. They're just what hot is... women with a uh, clothing. Oh yeah, Natalie Portman. What a mixed bag to be on. Uh, to be on a list like this. Yeah. Can you imagine like celebrities who prove having a small dick is actually kind of cool. <laughs> well, there's a whole TikTok trend now. What? Oh, Rihanna, so hot. Rihanna, so hot. There's a whole TikTok trend of uh, women who like small dicks. Really? And I'm like, where was this when I was a kid? Not only are you kids banging teachers, but you're also rocking a small dog and getting praise for it. I, I was getting laughed at. Dudes it. with Jim. tiny dicks shamelessly sliding in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, who gives a shit? All right, all right. This yeah, is... These are like tens. What yeah, are you these are hot about? women. No one. Um, what do I have for a peeve? Also, I need to see the tit. These are just women in clothing, but that's another show. Here's a peeve. You ever have that friend who's like, they have too much pride to apologize for the shitty thing they did, so now they just over-apologize for other meaningless things? Oh, interesting. Well, they do something really shitty to you, and then they're just like, oh my God, I'm three minutes late. I'm so sorry. Right. Like, what are you doing? It's like OJ. He murdered his wife, but we got him on the on the clothing scam. You know, we got him on the merch. Memorabilia? Yeah, the memorabilia. It's exactly. a memorabilia apology. <laughs> yes, exactly. You cut your wife's head off, but we didn't get... It's same with Al Capone. Al Capone, the murderer, gangster, but we got him on tax evasion. And syphilis. And syphilis. It ended up killing him. Yeah. That's, it is something that bugs me when the, the, the friend, like, they've done something shitty and then now he does it all the time. Right. He's like, oh, I really messed up on this thing. I was like, no, that's not the thing. That's not the thing. Yeah. I mean, I think girlfriends do that. You know, they're like, you left the dishes out again. You're like, Jesus, all right. What are you freaking out? But you actually, you know, fucked your sister or something. That's what's really going on. <laughs> That's an extreme. <laughs> Either version. way, you wish you could just scrub this whole thing clean. <laughs> yeah. yeah, here, here. This his name was Dawn. But all right, all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's a good one. Yeah, that's very relatable. The uh, the guy who does horrible shit and then apologize for the little thing. Yeah, I'm, w apologize for the fucking felony here. Yeah. Well, where are you at on the uh, lending a guy money? Asking for the money, and then he gets mad at you. I mean, it's where am I at? It's it's insane behavior. Okay, okay. What are you talking about? Who's who's siding with that guy other than that guy? I feel like this is a common trait in people. I lent this guy a, a, a hefty sum, and then yeah. years went by, and I go, hey, any uh, luck with the finances? And he's like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> you, you piece of shit. What are you, Chase Bank? I'm like, well, I mean, why am I the bad guy? I gave you money, and now I'm the bad guy for bringing it up? Oh, I mean, I think you gave him too long a leash by giving him years. Yeah, you might be if right. If you expected the money back. I did. I said, I'd like you to pay me back. He goes, I'll pay you back. I swear to God, I'll pay you back. And now he's like giving <laughs> Posting me Posting vacation photos. Yeah, I might kill his wife. <laughs> I'm in Cabo St. Lucas. Are you kidding me? <laughs> exactly. And then he'll be like, oh, hold on. Jeez, let me see what I got. He gives me like a 20. I'm like, I'm not trying to nickel and dime you here. I want the fucking the lump sum. <laughs> what a fucking prick. Yeah, he's a prick. Damn, is it a comic? No, no, no. It's an old friend from New Orleans. Damn. Yeah, but you know, then they start going like, "Oh well, I saw that Netflix half hour. That must have paid pretty good." It's like, yeah, it did. I, I earned that. You come stain. <laughs> come stain. Jesus Christ. Come stain's a good insult. I like it. I'm trying to bring it back. Come stain, jizz rag, anything j like negative jizz related is pretty fun. Yeah, come guzzler. Come That's guzzler. Good. Yeah. Although my dad, he got me pretty good. He said, "I, I wish you were come stain." Wow. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But, uh, <laughs> it's a good insult, pretty, though. Pretty, pretty, yeah, pretty good for a dad to say to his son. What a... Yeah, man. That's a peeve. Any other peeves? No, that was all I had. I had those those two. The the payback. I was going to save the payback for a later guest. All right, save But it. I might have, uh, might have oh, blown yeah. the load on that one. But I'll, I'll have something else happen within two hours. Um, Yeah, I'm sure I'll annoy you. I got a wreck point. for you. Give me a wreck. Are you guys watching the show The Bear? I hear it's amazing. It's pretty great. It you're feels... always a little ahead of me on shows, I think. I think it's because you're in a relationship. That's what it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah you guys were watching the full catalogs. Yeah. I, you guys had seen everything. But yeah. this is like, it's so well shot that I had to Google the guy who's doing it. That's when you know a show is good, where you're like, this is incredible. He also did eighth grade. He did the cinematography on Dan Soder's HBO special. Wow. And a couple other great things. Some, people, some people call him the bear. <laughs> That's and they're true. actually on Christopher Street. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, 
So, uh, really cool show. The acting's great. It's it's almost like an uncut gems where you're just like, mm. oh, God, it's so tense, so stressful. I'm freaking out. And I worked in kitchens. Or not kid. I was I worked as a waiter. So I was a restaurant guy for like 10 years. So it like brings you all back. And you're like, how has this never been made? This is a show about the, the life of a waiter and the kitchen staff and the dishwasher and the management and all the, the infighting. And it's, it's got gold. like the coming home element too. Yes. From Red. Yeah. So what, what's the... Uh, yeah, it, it is shocking that a show like this has never really been made. I mean, they made the movie Waiting, I guess. Oh, That's yeah. A very different vibe from what it looks like. This and is gritty. Yeah, and I mean, FX will do shit like this every once in a while. I feel like FX is a little up its own ass sometimes with they're like, yeah. when they post with things like FX, fearless. fearless. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Right, right. It's like when a comedian's like, I'm edgy. I'm like, <laughs> you don't say that if you're edgy. Exactly. You just make the shit. Fearless. Oh, you bought all the Simpsons. What a risk. <laughs> Big gamble on this uh, brilliant cartoon we all love. But yeah, this is like, uh, look, I mean, just that shot. Like, you can see they put time into it, and it feels like it feels like real art again. You're watching art on TV, which is so rare now. They have made they have made a lot of good shit, FX. I mean, the first couple of seasons of Fargo were great. Louie was obviously a great show. Yes. Uh, I'm missing. I'm mean, justified the Wil- I heard Wilfred was good with Elijah Wood. I he never really a gave a shot. I never yeah. did either, but I heard it was good. It was always on after Louie, and I was like, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of like when you're watching SNL as a kid and the Apollo comes on, you're like, it's 1 a.m. <laughs> yeah, when I was a kid, I'd watch cartoons, and then Donahue would come on. <laughs> you're like, ah, I'm good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, really cool show. It looks great, and the, the premise is so good. It's this kid in Chicago, inner city. His uh, brother owns a restaurant. Brother's an addict, shoots himself in the head. He became a culinary genius, moved to New York to work in, you know, these fine dining French places. Yeah. And then the brother dies, so he has to go operate the restaurant back in Chicago. So it's a huge step down. It's all these ragtag, misfit cooks, you know, they're all, uh, it's like a, basically a diner. And he's trying to make the diner kind of snazzy, and they're all fighting against it. And it's it's pretty great. Oh, Abby Elliott's in it. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing this show. I hear it's great. Uh, you're I want to see the fourth or fifth person to tell me, and I've oh, been seeing okay. articles about it. And uh, I'm going to watch. I also heard The Old Man on FX is really good with Jeff oh. Bridges and John Lithgow. Oh, I never heard of this. Yeah, that's supposed to be pretty good, The Old too. Man, huh? But, uh, I mean, hey, man, they're fearless. They, they do. <laughs> yeah, that, that's exactly what networks don't want, an old white man. And they put him on. <laughs> the old man. <laughs> that is pretty fearless. Yeah, I, I heard the original side was the old straight white man. So they, <laughs> they really went for it. Yeah, but Jeff Bridges, you can't go wrong. Oh, John Lithgow, too, man. Oh, yeah. Two heavyweights. But... Uh, yeah, man. It's supposed to be. Is that good Rotten Tomato scores, like audience and critics? Let's see what they got. Ooh, 84, 90. I mean, this is gold. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it looks solid. Um, I'm, I'm always down. looking for a new show to watch. I'm going to I'm gonna watch The Bear first, probably. But uh... it just TV drama is inherently flawed because they have to make up these. They have to keep getting more ridiculous with the scenarios and the conflicts that it the show tends to suffer. So it's hard to make them good for a long time. Right. But absolutely, these writers today are pretty great. But uh, yeah, no, I heard it's. Uh, I heard the bear is awesome, man. It's fun. It's fun. You feel like, whoa, I'm watching something. And it's cable. You're like, I can't believe I'm watching something this good on cable. Sometimes I'm watching something before I go to bed, though, in those like panic attacky type shows. Yes, that is the problem. They, it's hard they, to be like. <laughs> it's not a wind downer for sure. I got a good wreck for you. Mm. A weighted blanket. Ooh, I don't love them. I love them. My lady likes them. I don't. I don't know. Well, why don't you like them? I don't want any constriction in bed. I want to be flappy and free, like a like a loose vagina. I want to be all labia. I want to <laughs> kick my feet out, put my feet back in. I want to throw the pillow. I want to be, uh, what's the word? Frictionless. I, I like a weighted blanket. It it it, it keeps you down, you know. Mm, yeah, kinda that like, sounds bad. Kind of like a straight white man. Yeah, they keep you down. Exactly. No, uh, <laughs> no. They. Uh, I like it. it. It it helps me sleep. It's uh, okay. You're not alone. They're, they're very popular. My lady likes them. She's like it, it calms me. I'm like calm. calm. Yeah, um, improves sleep quality. I do feel like it helps the quality of the oh. sleep. I know what you mean though. Like someone breaks in, the yeah. last thing you want is like. Mm, yes, mm. yes, exactly. I hate that feeling. I feel like I'm in a. One time I got rolled up in a in a rug when I was a kid, <laughs> and you want to kill yourself. You're like, this is the worst day of my Did life. Did you overdose? And your friends were like, toss him. <laughs> 
like, not yet, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> like, all right, all right. I was like a crepe. I was in there. I couldn't move. <laughs> a crepe. Yeah, it was brutal. <laughs> I love it. the French drug addict. Like, He's like a crepe. <laughs> Statutory <laughs> crepe. I was stuck. I, and you're, you're just so claustrophobic. And you can just kind of see a little light above you because yeah. that's where the, the hole is. And oh, my God. Oh, man. It's like you're being reborn. Yes. Not good. It smelled worse. <laughs> but yeah. And when I got out, they slapped me. But, uh, it was brutal. Now, a word from our sponsor, BetterHelp. You have to take care of your mind, folks. We spend so much time taking care of our skin, our hair, our teeth, and so little care of the most important body part, the brain. How well you take care of your brain affects how you experience life. Investing time and energy in mental health is crucial to being happy. Eating right, working out, and getting plenty of sleep are a good start, but no substitution for talk therapy. BetterHelp makes online therapy accessible, convenient, and affordable. We love therapy. It's good for you. Don't let those bags pile up. Everybody's got shit in their life. Everybody's got drama. You got to make it work. You got to be healthy. And that's how you do it is talking about it. That's how you get it out. BetterHelp is online therapy that offers video, phone, and chat therapy sessions. You can choose to not see anyone on camera. And it's much more affordable than in person. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. We might be drunk listeners. Get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com. Dot com slash drunk. That's B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash drunk. Get on it. We might be drunk is sponsored by Fanimal. This is the summer you're going to go out and do shit. If you want the best price for the best shows this season, use Fanimal. Fanimal has tickets to everything with no fees. The price you see is the price you pay. For hot tickets to a Dodger game or Lady Gaga, Fanimal is always the cheapest option. Fanimal's group purchase makes it easy to get your friends together, set a size for you and your group. You choose a number of tickets you want to pay for yourself, then invite friends. When the group size is met, everyone gets charged and receives their ticket. If the minimum size isn't reached in time, Nobody gets charged. Don't commit until your friends do. Fanimal has amazing customer service. Don't take our word for it. Check out their hundreds of five-star reviews. The next time you need tickets, go to Fanimal.com and sign up with code DRUNK for $20 of credit toward your first purchase. Check out Fanimal and experience more. Fanimal! All right. Support the show and get $20 off your first per- purchase with the code DRUNK at uh, Fanimal.com. If you haven't already, it's smooth. Oh, if you haven't heard already, it's smooth sex summer. The <laughs> leading, the leader in below the belt grooming is making sure we all have a ball this summer by giving your pants partners everything they need to stay fresh. I love this thing. You gotta love the Manscaped Performance Package 4.0. It's got it all. I use this thing on my sack. I go around the base of the shaft. You just want a little extra length. And uh, no better equipment than these guys. Manscaped did it right. They got a goddamn headlight on the thing. Yeah. And uh, you, you, you can't nick. You can't cut. I mean, there's a lot of veins down there and a yeah. lot of uh, precious material you don't want to ruin. I just uh, use it, man. It's it's. I feel lighter. It's great. Yeah, it works. I, I mean, had a fucking fro covering my balls. <laughs> yeah. Big fan. Our, our pubes look like our hair, so uh, it's not that different. And you need a real... I got sideburns, too. On the... <laughs> you need a real mower down there. Yeah. The Lawnmower 4.0 Body Trimmer and Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer features proprietary advanced skin-safe technology to perfect, protect your delicate parts and holes. Both are waterproof, so you can shave in the shower. Come on. Get it all out in one go. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxers and Shed Travel Bag. Take a look at the Shears 2.0, a luxury nail grooming kit. Grooming kit. I keep one in my, my bag all the time. This kit includes stainless steel, nail cutters, tweezers, and grooming scissors. No more scratching your lady in bed with those feet. Get 20% off. And free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code DRUNK at manscaped.com. It's smooth sack summer, boys. Get on board or get left behind with your hairy ball bag. What? Uh, I got another wreck for you. All right. Movie. Colin Quinn wrecked it to me. It's awesome. And I apologize if I'm doing, I'm doing, I don't think I've done this yet, have I? Well, we you tell it. me because I definitely uh, repeated a, a peeve. 
Yeah, same. I did uh, one too. We drink on here. Like, what yeah. do you guys? What do you guys expect? Sometimes I'm going to say the same shit again and again. And that's how you know it's genuine. If he said it twice, that means you really do hate it. All right, here's my rec: a weighted blanket. <laughs> no, I, it's uh, the movie Mona Lisa. Colin Quinn told me to watch it. He's a big film buff. Uh, Not God. Mona Lisa Smile. No, no Mona no, Lisa. No. I've never uh, heard of it. Yeah, Bob Hoskins, Michael Caine. Oh, eighty six. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Um, it, they, some call it the British Taxi Driver. Whoa! Kind of a slow paced guy gets out of prison, drives around a prostitute. Oh, Neil Jordan made it. Did like the Crying Game and a bunch of shit. Okay. Yeah, never it's good. It. It's a good flick. Uh, is it? Is it a thriller? Yeah, it's kind of like a slow paced. Uh, weird story about a guy driving around a hooker and you kind of slowly learn more and more about both of them all and, right and and their dynamic and it's uh british it's a, good, it's a good flick all right i'm down it also just shows you what a different place uh you know british movies were than america's if you made a movie about like a black prostitute and a white guy driving around in america that'd be like the whole movie yeah good they'd point. be like we got this is the whole thing is the point. racial tension but in england you're like yeah they're just that's just who they are right you know, that's why I'll check that out. It looks right up my It's almost got a noir vibe. It's very noir. Okay. This is why uh, Patrice O'Neill said in an interview, he's like, I went to England because in, in America, I'm a fat N-word, and in England, I'm a, just a fat guy. <laughs> so he's like, I don't want to be seen as black. I just want to be a comic. People are going up to him, you're fat. He's like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Then he comes back to America, JFK, like, hey, you're fat, you know. <laughs> so, uh, but he said he got good, like uh, Elephant in the Room was from going to London. Wow. He did London for three years. Not to mention he was kicked out of about 11 comedy clubs, banned. Wow. So he had to, he had to move on. He yeah, kind of well. got like canceled before the internet. Why don't we have a Patrice thing? We got to get it, Peters. We have all these passed on comedians. Well, there's no Patrice. We'll get one. It'd be nice. Yeah, he's... We could just also, get his toe. I got to say, you know, I don't know when this is coming out, but I mean, Jack Knight, it's horrible. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. Very funny guy. Funny Very guy, talented, cool guy. going to go super far. Already had a huge career. I think he was writing on Big Mouth. For five seasons. Wow. And there's clips of him being so damn funny on it, like his character. And he's 28. Yeah. He was doing so well at 28. And he was just like a guy. Like, I'm not going to sit here and act like I knew him well, but every in interaction was just like, he was just, he just had a funniness about him yeah he just, it was just in him certain people positive yeah I yeah mean, no i i only met him a few times and uh always nice cool um, first time i met him i was hosting a showcase in los angeles uh for like jfl or something and yeah. i'm hosting it it's a lot of young guys a lot of them aren't that funny he was funny mm -hmm. and he was confident and he i mean dude he must have been like 20 yeah he was a baby wow and he was funny and like immediately ball busting me and silly and i was like oh i like this guy yeah really nice guy funny guy yeah he was good i saw him at the stand like a year ago and he was great did a netflix 15 with yeah. a lot of people we know like tim dylan and uh that's right and ian carmel and, and k will a lot of comics we know and uh damn and it was yeah. suicide yeah oh my god you never know what people are going through and i'm look here, here's a little lesson is I'm sure there's a comic out there who he had beef with, who I was friction. And then look what can happen. We're, we're so petty and we, we forget that like, it's, this is all so flimsy. Everyone's got something. Everyone's and, got something uh, going on and you never know. And you know, uh, yeah, you don't know what people are dealing with when, right. you know, and, and also people you're friends with who are just silly at the club and then they go home and you're like, you don't know what they're going home to. So I think there's so many comics I know that are like these like beaming forces of just nonstop funny. Yeah. And then they probably are exhausted. <laughs> right. When they go right. home. So you don't know. You and know. a lot of people think like, he got this, he got, he's a writer on Netflix, he's got it made, but you never know what's going on in the, in the of head. Of course. Yeah. If you think money, fame, credits. credits, you know, if you think that's going to turn shit around for you, like there is emptiness at the end of that shit. Yeah. I mean, you got to find, uh, and, and if, and, and you can look at me and Mark's tour schedule. We're still chasing it nonetheless, <laughs> but no, chasing it's a uh, dragon, baby. But it's, uh, it's a tragedy. And he had just had a new show on Peacock, which I haven't seen yet, but I hear is great, called The Beatdown with Langston Kerman and, and oh, Sam Jay. And, I love Langston. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Great guy. See, he was working, he was doing it, and still. Still, still, you never know what's going on in that head. You never know. So, yeah, if this is too late when this comes out, uh, you know, I apologize, but uh, we'll, we'll do something sooner, too. But uh, R.I.P. Toast. Toast to Jack. There you go. There's your toast. All right. 
Now this is that weird moment in the uh, comedy show where you have to seg back in the material. Let's do, let's do news. Let's do Ooh, some news. good call. Hey. Good save. And squeeze a titty to get it light again. Yes, yes. Women. Woman. Oh, you oh, go sorry. ahead. Sorry. Woman buys sex doll for her husband that looks just like her as an alternative to having a threesome, as well as take the pressure off when she's not in the mood. The UK <laughs> couple who earn a living on OnlyFans and can earn up to 122000 a month were considering exploring group sex, but Char had reservations and was worried she might get jealous. Damn. Now, here's why I get a little fucked up with this, because... It's an interesting compromise. The guy wants to have a threesome. She doesn't. So let's build a sex robot that looks just like you. First of all, why would you do that if you want to have a threesome? Yeah. Now you're just fucking the, the same lady twice. And secondly, does she really look like her? She's got the same dress and blonde hair. That's it. Doesn't look like her. And also, like, what, how little do you move around that emotionless doll is your replacement? Ah, good how point. How lifeless is your body during sex? Yeah, where you're like, I'd rather fuck this uh, two-dimensional skin sack whatever this thing is over you it's not a prize it's like it sounds like a punishment if you're just like yeah i'm not in the mood go fuck that doll yeah cool uh this relationship is really healthy for both of us (laughs) but then she's like the guy's like i gotta tell you the doll gives better head (laughs) somehow (laughs) the head is better i mean i think it's great the idea that if like they have a threesome and he just is all over the doll she's just like because that's always a woman's biggest fear that you have a threesome and you're more into the other person they bring in right that'd be great if she's just laying there he's just like fucking the doll like crazy she's like this is i know that would that would hurt yeah i I don't know the doll thing to me what are we doing yeah it's a waste it's just taking up bed space put an oculus on your head and play a fucking video game if that's real i mean that's not, not bad yeah I'd like to try that. The Coculus. Ah, that's a new game. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's silly. These people are dead inside. Man pushes peanut peanut up Colorado Mountain. What? Huh? I wish this guy had a peanut allergy. <laughs> 53-year-old Colorado man didn't crack under pressure as he pushed a peanut to the top of the 14... 14- 1,115 foot summit this week. However, he didn't use his hands to move the peanut along 12.6 mile route to the top of the mountain. He decided to let his nose do the pushing. This makes no sense to me. I don't wow. understand how this... Yeah, he, what the fuck? He pushed a peanut up a mountain with his nose for 12 miles. That's insane. That's It's funny because it's like one of those accomplishments that you tell people and they're like... Yeah, yeah, right. Okay. It's not like a cool Guinness book. It's like, yeah, cool, you did it. But no one's going to be like, wow, that, that's a really cool idea. I know. You you're, did. you're just like, oh, you have that much time. You're that much of a loser. Good yeah, job. You take this to the, the, the planner CEO and they're like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to do you don't want to do business with them? No, no, it's fucking weird. <laughs> We're trying to get true. peanut eaters who aren't fucking weird. Yes. I guess in a weird way, he might be good at cunnilingus somehow. <laughs> Maybe there's just a tie in. Nose in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lady's like, all right, well, if you can do if you can do that for twelve hours, you can do this for twenty minutes. Yeah. You know, so maybe there's that. <laughs> he's got a, he's got a better neck than I do. I'll tell you yeah, that. Yeah, the neck is impressive. Uh, but yeah, what a dork. Rhode Island Dunkin' Donut says it accidentally ordered free coffee to white residents. Mm. Uh, a company spokesperson said the offer was copy pasted from a similar offer in White Plains, New York, but only the word Plains was deleted. So, uh, yeah, just white, free white coffee. This is how hungry we are to, like, gotcha somebody. Yeah. Like, you just put white residents. Like, yeah, I was supposed to put white Plains. You know what? I, I fucked up. Yeah. I could have put planes instead of white, but it happened to be this way. Come on. Yeah, it's a, I, apparently they got in worse trouble uh, on their electricity bill. They, they actually only copy and pasted white power. <laughs> got way worse. Yeah. And then they uh, they also accidentally deleted the word out, and they said, <laughs> ah, it's a black. <laughs> All right. Dolphins recognize each other by tasting one another's urine. Mmm, ah, uh, the old R. Kelly flipper. New <laughs> research suggests that the ocean mammals have a unique sense of taste that allows them to sense friends and family members through piss and other excretions. I'm, I'm really sick of people saying dolphins and humans are so similar. Yeah. Because they're always like, dolphins have the most similar brain. I'm glad I, I eat dolphin. How about that? Ooh. 
I'm glad I fucking eat. <laughs> You're not dolphin safe anymore. You're have eating you, that dolphin. Have you seen uh, that documentary, The Cove? Yes. That's fucked up. The dolphin slaughter in Taiji. Holy shit. Wait, isn't that the one where they, they the, the trainer jerks him off? Or is that a different one? That doesn't sound like that movie at all. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I saw a different dolphin movie. No, the Cove. It's like uh, dolphin slaughter, and they're like feeding to the kids. It's got crazy sodium levels. They're slaughtering these dolphins. People are really mad about it. Oh wow! It's funny. You can get me on the side of any environmentalist if they make a documentary about it. And then, like two weeks later, I was like, "Yeah, I'd eat a dolphin." Yeah, why not? Yeah. Bring it on. Well, well, why do we eat tuna and not dolphin? What makes a dolphin better than a tuna? I think tuna is more nutritious, right? So Would that's it? Guess. Probably. Okay. Because we act like, oh, this guy's a monster. He ate a dolphin. But if it c just comes down to nutrition, then. Well, don't lobsters have similar nervous systems to humans? Yeah, we put them in a pot and they live dolphin forever. Dolphin see it's very high in mercury and may pose a health danger to humans when consumed. That, that's probably it. That's it, huh? I don't know. It feels like there's some moral thing about eating dolphins. But if it's just a nutrition, because, I mean, a Twinkie's not nutritious either. Is known as a mahi mahi in the Pacific. Early answer for another rather delicious fish known as the dolphin fish. Okay. <laughs> Someone wrote, "Can you eat giraffe?" Let me see that. Ooh. Uh, I just want a yes or no. This is the problem with the internet. They give you all these fucked up answers. But whoever came up with that's higher. That guy's higher than giraffe pussy. That guy <laughs> needs a high five. I love <laughs> lines like that. We have no idea who thought of it. Yeah. You know, there's a million. Like, even the first guy to go, is that clear? Crystal. Like, somebody had to think of that. Yeah. And we just don't know who did it. A toast to the people who thought of things. Yes. The unsung heroes. The unsung heroes. Yes. So, giraffe pussy. I'm sure you can eat anything at the end of the day. Like, if, if you ever watch that show Alive, these people are out there in the middle of hell, and it's like Alaska, and they just start eating squirrels and nuts and berries. Squirrels. They're eating, like, one guy ate a bunch of, um... Feels like a lot slugs. of work. Yeah. Swirl, he got through all that hair and stuff. I know, it's like a I bushy know. tail and stuff, yeah. Yeah, it's probably pretty gamey. Yeah, it's gamey. Yeah. You know what's cute about squirrels? What? They hide acorns, like, they, they gather all these acorns, and they hide a bunch, and they forget where they all were, and that's how a tree grows. Is that, that true? How cute is that? Give it a goog. Wow, I did not know that. That's adorable. It feels like a Pixar plot. Have they not made a good squirrel Pixar movie? Ah, that's a good question. Squirrels are kind of adorable. They're adorable. I mean, they're full of STDs, but... For uh, sure. I mean, but that fluffy tail really saves them. And they're so quick. If they had a grosser tail, we'd look at them like rats, but that little fluffy tail really... Yeah. And in the words of George Cartwright, estimates the number of new accidental squirrel trees planted each year range in the millions globally. Come on. Wow. But in the words of George Carlin, where's all the squirrel shit? That's like a great Carlin observation. I love this joke about how, how mice don't have sh uh, shoulders. <laughs> Such a dumb observation. I love that. Oh, or how about uh, Patrice's bit about how he's like, we feel bad when we eat animals, but we eat fish all the time because they don't have eyebrows. They're not like... <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good point. It's a great point. Eyebrows, eyebrows really help. Yeah, well, we know. Thanks. <laughs> no one's eating me. Like, now, ugh. What about this? Oh, yeah, you're pretty hairy. Yeah. You'd be like, ah, shit, I got another one. So it'd be a lot of work to eat me. A lot of work. You'd have to shave it. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Now, have you heard about this? This I is did, pretty yeah. wild. Comedian Craig Robinson evacuated from North Carolina Comedy Club due to gunfire. Uh, an unidentified man brandished a firearm inside the Comedy Zone in Charlotte and discharged his weapon. I mean, this is a club we both play. Yeah, you got that right. Great club. Great club, but it's such kind of a vague... I read the story and I was like... Was he in the room? Did he shoot? Did anyone get hit? Why did he brand a weapon? What was his motive? I, there's no information on this story. Yeah. Something's missing. And then Craig Robinson said he went next door to the arena and played there. And I'm like, so you were lucid enough to go play a, a show the same night? I mean, wouldn't that fuck you up a little bit if somebody shot in your, in your show? I don't know. Something's off here. Yeah, I don't know. That's, he appears in court. Okay. I feel like uh, we're missing a a step or something. It's very strange. But, uh, okay, in lieu of events last night, we'd like to thank all the amazing people that work day in and day out, blah, blah, blah. I was like, it's going to take a short breather. Okay. All right. Well, it's a hell of a closer. <laughs> Pulling a gun out. 
<laughs> I guess Craig Robinson's got new merch now. Hey, get the gun shirt. <laughs> Uh, Andrew Tate in hot water again after telling women to stay home. Oh, this guy. This guy's just like a provocateur. I don't know who he is. <laughs> He's one of these internet guys who's like, women should be in the kitchen and, you know, let the man do his job and the woman is the subordinate. You know, he's one of those types. All right. Yeah. <laughs> There's always one guy what, like what's that. What's the clip? I don't see it. Can you not play it? He's trying. What would you do if I was going on girls' holidays every other month? I have to shut that down. I think it's disrespectful. <laughs> you go on a holiday? Do whatever I want. You're with me. No one told you. We go on holidays together. We go places together. When I have to go places with just the boys, you stay home. But it could just be like women just go on holiday to have fun. And, and men will try sleep. and sleep with you. So? Does so that I mean the women are? Correct. This is what I'm saying. You agree. Can sleep with this no, no, agree. Agree. No, but you're agree. not reality. It's not reality. Because we agree. Yes, you do. Okay. We agree. Okay. No, you're not moving on to the next question. We are moving no, we agree. Okay. We agree. Is... You're right. They're going to try, and you're not going to let them. I agree. If I walk out to the car park, it doesn't matter how good the locks are on my car. If someone's trying to break into my car, am I going to let them keep trying? No. No. It's disrespectful. It's mine. And no one comes near it because it's mine. No one's going to try and steal it. For me to I'll put it in a place where people are going to try and steal it is nothing less than irresponsible. My female is taken care of and has a fantastic life. She does not need to go on holidays to f***ing make an awesome, be a hoe on some random okay, table. On some random table because her friend met some dude on f***ing Tinder. No. no Stay home. Stay home. Hmm. Interesting. I don't just don't know why he's getting so worked up. I mean, like he says all that shit in a calm voice. It's not making headlines, right? Yeah. I mean, probably. it's not cool, but also like, yeah, comparing a woman to your car. Uh, right. <laughs> it's like there's a lot. Of, like we're basically just calling her an object here. Yeah. Yeah. Boop boop. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Uh, it's tough. I mean, I I don't know really the context. Yeah, me neither. What he was saying, but uh, I think he's just that guy. There's always one of these guys. Like, remember yeah. the uh, the guy? What was that book that went viral that everybody liked? Oh, the, Tucker Max. Not Tucker Max. The other guy. Like how to how to like nag a woman? Nag oh, a woman. the game. The guy. game. That guy. And it's all bullshit. It's like they're like you got a peacock. I'm like. I've seen some losers in fedoras. I don't know yes, if that shit works, dude. That's true. I think I think this works for you. But also those dudes, like I've seen dudes try to follow that shit, and I'm like, you just look like a tool. I know you're getting laid, but like you've sacrificed who you are. Yes, yes. They're wearing sunglasses inside at a casino. They got flames on their shirt, and they're like, <laughs> oh, they got a weird soul patch, you know, and a chain wallet for some reason. And they're like, hey, whore, get me a drink. And she's like, what? And you're like, this is your thing now? Are you going to be this guy? Come on. <laughs> the, what's up with that shirt? Oh, this shirt? Oh, I didn't even realize I'm wearing it. It's because you're so hot that I'm on fire now. Exactly. Like, I know. Cool. Um, and their whole life becomes about like slaying puss. Which, look, I get it. We all like a good clam. But also, yeah. if you got a thing going, like put all that time into playing the piano or or writing a book or something, you know, into a career or a, a hobby. I just think it's gross when people reduce women to their body parts. <laughs> there we go. Tits. Toast. Um, yeah, no, I, I, the, Mark's right. These types of dudes are always... Uh, it's like a vibe. It's like a thing. He's like, I'm, this is who I am. Yeah. Um, this is my audience. It's like, yeah, your girlfriend is a nice... I don't get... It. So it's like she can't go on vacation is what he's saying without him? I don't, I don't get it. I think it. so, yeah. Because somebody's going to try to bang her a la breaking the car. I mean, look, analogy. we all have trust issues, but... <laughs> I mean, it's just like, what do you, what, why, why the passion? Like, why, like, it's to me, I'm just like, oh, this guy's been hurt in this way. I yeah, think. something's going. That's on. That's what I hear. I don't, I don't know. Needs a hug. Maybe mom wasn't around. You always hear about daddy issues. What about mom issues? Those exist too. Oh yeah, this mom guy issues? might have mom issues. You, mom issues. I feel like we talk about them now. It feels like a magazine I would buy too. <laughs> mom issues. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's going on here? Denise Richards showcases her cleavage in racy red lingerie as she continues to promote her wow. OnlyFans. Last month, Denise Richards launched her own OnlyFans page after her daughter, Sammy Sheen, oh, started one. Oh, shit. Wow, so instead of telling her daughter not to do that, she's like, I'm in. Yeah, you can't beat uh, mom here, you know? she. I created your ass, and I can also uh, out-tit you. I, I will say, I mean, you never know where life's going to take you. I had such a crush on Denise Richards as a kid. I mean, I remember uh, I remember being like, oh, wait, does it tell you how many followers they have and stuff? This is Denise Richards' OnlyFans page. We're I've on never here. seen this. 
I've never uh, been on OnlyFans. I mean, this is exciting. Yeah, Denise Richards, uh, Wild Things. I mean, Starship oh. Troopers. I remember all that shit. Of course, of course. Charlie Sheen's uh, wife there. Charlie, if you're listening. We want you on this podcast. Yes. Everyone immediately start commenting on Sheen's yes. Instagram right now. Come on, we might be drunk. Tag at we might be drunk so he knows what you're talking about. Everyone go to Sheen now. We've yes. been trying to get Sheen for a long time. Oh, yeah. We'll take Emilio Estevez also. <laughs> whatever you can get us. But we want Sheen. Now, who would you rather? Would you go mom or daughter here? Jeez. It's, they're both very attractive. Both were very attractive. I'm going to say... Neither out of respect to us pursuing Charlie at some point. Ah, uh, is, but is that Charlie's kid? Yeah. Oh, it is? Sammy Sheen? Oh, geez, I didn't see that. Okay, that makes <laughs> sense. No, it's Martin's kid. <laughs> <laughs> what uh, w- w- What are you saying, Mark? I might, I got to go mom just because, uh, I mean, look, if you've been with Sheen, you're going to be an animal. I mean, there's no way she doesn't do anal. And They're both beautiful women. Other stuff. Both, both very attractive, both gorgeous. I don't love the, the, the younger one has a bit of a, oh, I'm innocent. Is this okay? I, I like the mom. She's like, let's go put your balls on my forehead. Seasoned. Seasoned. Yeah. Yes, and I my like- balls, they're, they're salty. <laughs> Sorry, I like I like a vet. I like yes. a vet. Yeah, give me a vet. I support the troops. Yeah, here, here. All right, Sammy. Wow, yeah. fun. Only fan. I know a couple ladies on OnlyFans who I'm friends with, and I'm like, really? part of me, I could just go online and and yeah. I can see a nip. Yeah, it's isn't crazy. that wild? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, this is. People are making crazy money on this shit. It's a very interesting time. Hey, don't objectify women. Hey, we're all equal. Hey, I'm not an object. But check out my OnlyFans where I show every uh, body part for money. It's a very strange uh, Well, we'll say it's something very, you know, my body, my choice about it. We're talking That's about- true. We're talking, how could you be pro-choice and against this, right? I mean, Ooh. I will say that like, you know- well, no one, no one's getting hurt. I guess is the argument. No one's getting paid off their abortion. Yeah, I made one hundred twenty thousand dollars last month on uh, abortion fans. <laughs> I've actually paid for a few abortions. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, but you're not getting. But paid. I didn't get any. Yeah, neither did yeah, she. Yeah. She actually lost something. But yeah. yeah, good point. All right. Well, hey, good news. Good news, brother. Denise, maybe I'll get on OnlyFans. Who knows? Would you? Do you have to pay per? I've never done it. I got to pay What's, per. So you really got to fall in love with somebody and, and want to see it. See, if it was a buffet, that'd be different. The thing, here's what bothers me about it in theory as a consumer. If you went to a strip club, you leave. The OnlyFans, you never leave. You're like you're always there, right? You can always just they, log on. They have your credit card, yeah. I mean, it's it seems crazy. I don't know. That's true. Wow. See, wow. this is this is female privilege, by the way. Yeah, who like, are the top male earners? I want to see. Oh, Three dollars. Mia Khalifa. I can watch her for free on porn. Cardi B is on there. Whoa. Cardi B. Bella Thorne. I've heard of her. Wow. P. I wonder Mia. how their agents respond. They're like, "What are you doing?" Yeah. And like, then they're like, "Give me a cut, please." <laughs> yes. Please give me a cut because I'm I'm subscribed. <laughs> wow. Who are the top men on there? Oh, interesting. Bella Thorne, isn't she? She's very attractive. Yeah. She was on Bill Maher's podcast. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He was all over. Club Random. Yes. Okay, people. All right. (laughs) Why would you have kids? Okay. (laughs) The best uh, Dunnigan. Kyle Dunnigan. Oh, my God. So good. My favorite. That guy is underrated. Um,. Oh, yeah. Well, this is a new low. We've just sunk to uh, Matt trying to hack in OnlyFans. Are you trying to see the men? Yeah, we're really fucking up your browser history. Oh, yeah. I love Matt's wife coming in like, what the <laughs> fuck? He's like, it's not what you think. <laughs> then she scrolls back a few. She's like, you want to have a threesome with a sex robot that looks just like me? He's like, no, no. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we got to wrap this thing up here. Should we do a bit or something? Oh, we should do a bit. Yes, for sure. What do you got? Here we go, baby. Pulling out the master list. And hopefully Bodega Cat is here any day now. I mean, Yeah, we got a nice text today. We might have to just open the episode with the push. What do you mean? Like we'll just add something, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, oh, shit. I got that Amazon thing. You saved me on that bit. Really? Yeah. Which bit? Your angle was the one that worked. Hell just, yeah. Just about how Amazon... I was like, isn't it weird that adopted kids don't have reviews? 
And then I was like, Amazon, man. You're like, it should be Amazon should get into the adoption game. And That's that it is, yeah. took it into the to the right, right direction. Sweet. But hold on. You, you got something I'm still looking. I had one I think could be something. There's something. The other day I saw a guy peeing in broad daylight mm. just on the street. And this woman walks up to him and she goes, what's wrong with you? Mm. And it's like, what? What do you you want like an answer? Right, right. You think this dude is gonna like be like, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't know. Like to me, I'm like, who's crazier, the crazy person, or the person who thinks she can communicate with the crazy person? Uh-huh. It's like you see that person on the train. It's almost like a guy's just like ah, and she's like, keep it down. Right, right. Keep it down. Yeah, it's weird to ask a question. You can be like, hey, get out of here, sicko, or hey, you pervert, or hey, you piece of shit. But to ask a question, like. What are we doing? Yeah, here? are you trying to get to the bottom of this? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you want an answer? Is funny, and also like that, like that guy. The guy, <laughs> you think he knows he's not supposed to? Like he right. doesn't care. Regardless, you think he's going to pull his dick back? And he goes, "I had no idea. I'm yeah. so sorry." Years ago, I was at Broadway Comedy Club, and I, I had no one was looking, and I was so broke that I opened the cooler and I stole a, a bottle out of it, like a beer bottle, and I was drinking. Some guy goes, like a worker, was like, "What are you doing? You can't steal that." I'm like, "Yeah, I know." I, didn't think I, get <laughs> I was like, "I thought no one saw me." Also, every other club doesn't charge us for this. I know. You're the only club that's trying to make money off comedians <laughs> having one beer. I had to. Steal Steal it, yeah, it was bad. Oh, I we used to get lit up at Caroline's for free. I remember that. Oh, shit. those were the days, baby. Old fashions. Yeah, I Bud think he, I think you got something there because it's so relatable. Like, what is wrong with you? My, I don't live around here, and I got to piss. Yeah, it's pretty easy. It's like uh, that James Smith joke. It's like, well, why do men cheat? Oprah was like, why do we? We want to fuck other chicks. <laughs> <laughs> I love James Smith. Oh uh, yeah, just I the, miss that guy. Simple answer, nice and easy. I think it's because we want to fuck other chicks, Oprah. <laughs> Uh, woo. All right, I've been trying to crack the code on this bit, and it needs a, it's missing an element. Yeah, hit me. Sometimes a joke is just missing an element. Yeah. So I talk about how my dad is kind of, he's kind of out to lunch, like he doesn't give a fuck or whatever. You know, people are like, is he proud of you? And I'm like, I don't know. And I want to do this whole thing about how dads don't really care that much. Like, he's a good dad. He was a provider, whatever. But that's why there's no fathers against drunk driving. Mm. You know, we got moms against drunk driving. Shouldn't it be fad? Isn't it weird that there's no fathers? Like, how did that go down? Like, the wife is like, we got to get together and help these kids. And the dad's like, hey, that's a great organization, honey, but I've had 12 beers and I got to get the car home. Maybe, maybe there's this. All right, you drive. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's not bad. I think it's, you know, yeah, I hear what you're saying. I think I, I think it's a great premise. This is an old premise of yours. I remember you yeah. bringing this up to me once. So it's There's not like, enough there, I don't well, think. Well, it's funny, like, the idea that... Uh, I mean, I feel like men just drink and drive more. Right. I just feel like that's like, I could be totally wrong on those stats. What do you think? Is that crazy? I think it's something about like, a guy will be like, a guy will be like, I'm I'm thinking like how kids were made. I'm like, I bet that guy came over drunk or something. Right. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Like guys just think of their high points drinking and driving. Yeah. Like I made it to this chick's house and I fucked her, you know? Yeah. You don't think of the lowest. Uh-oh. Is oh, this wow. new or is this a joke? Oh, no. Hilarious. Wow, well, that bit's over. <laughs> Fuck. May- no, I think you can save it by saying, you know, there's a father against drunk driving, but you never hear about it. You never hear about it. And why wouldn't they combine? Shouldn't it be parents? Pad? Isn't it weird that... I think I think maybe that's a joke where you say... Another rivaling. Well, you, you have a guy on the... You know, they're like, yeah, yeah. Do you know there's a father's against drunk driving? They're like, why don't they combine? They're like, we don't know, but they are getting crushed. They're raising no money. <laughs> they're spending it all on drinking. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because the moms... You've, we've all heard of mothers against drunk driving. No one's heard of fad. Wow. And why are there women in there? Oh, those might be the kids. It's just weird that those are separated. Shouldn't the parents come together on this? <laughs> it, maybe the, the angle is like there's nothing else like that. You know, like there's no organization where a mom is like, we got to stop these kids from doing heroin. The dad's like, I'm out. But we're, with fathers against drunk driving, it's somehow they are out. Mothers against date rape. We're like, we're going to do our own. And you're like, you don't want to combine? They're like, we'll see who wins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's the angle. <laughs> Like, right. like, hey, why are we separating fundraising? And yes. why, why are we reducing it? Like, some woman's like, can I join? They're like, are you a father? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It then no. It shouldn't be by sex. Yeah. I don't know. There's something there. Something there. I'll play with it. Play I'm going to 
a good point where I got like all the stuff I need to get working, and then I have no new ideas. Oh, I've not. My new shit sucks. Hard yeah. to work on new stuff in West Palm Beach, I'll tell you. Oh, I can imagine. Not a great. Uh, I mean, look, they they were good crowds, but they like. I feel like I'd be killing for like forty five, fifty, and then around the fifty minute mark, they're just like. Whoo. Yeah, I'm like, oh, you're done, huh? I know, and the, they start late over there a, a lot. That, I don't think that helps. That doesn't help. Then the boo, you can you can almost tell when the booze kicks in in a whole unit of people. You know, like the feature has a good set. You're killing up top, first twenties, lights out, and then it's just like, <whistles> that's how I felt when I was there, Me and I'll too. be there in two weeks. I had a great time, but yeah, that is definitely the that's the, it's hard to work on shit in Florida. It really is. They get rowdy. Yeah. And they don't like an unpolished bit. You got to come at them. Yeah. I feel like Tampa is like the only place you yeah, can kind of work on shit. But that's like true. Miami, Orlando, fucking uh, Jacksonville. Yeah, you got to bring the heat. You got to bring it, folks. They they want to party. They're ready to go salsa dancing. And we're in the way. Like, uh, anxiety sucks. Like, <laughs> don't have that. I got fake tits and cocaine. <laughs> They're like, what? What is that? Yeah. I feel great. <laughs> the weather here is awesome, and we do drugs. So, oh yeah. Um, should we plug dates? Hell yeah! Where are you gonna be well, there? Well, uh, make sure to get our merch at we might be drunk pod.com, Sign up for the Patreon. Yeah, we got some cool shit going on. This tequila is good, and uh, we got a lot of great guests coming up. A oh, lot yeah. of awesome stuff. Tell your friends about the pod. I feel like it's growing so quickly. We got uh, Los Angeles added another show. We might add another as well. Bourbon Room, uh, August 17th through 18th. Pittsburgh Improv the following week. Dania Beach, Florida. Louisville. Irvine. Omaha. Uh, Phoenix. Lexington, Kentucky. New Brunswick, New Jersey. Oklahoma City. Springfield, Missouri. Fort Wayne, Indiana on Thanksgiving. Choo-choo. Wow. Uh, glad I agreed to that one. Talk about dads oh. not being around. That, <laughs> that's, a, that's a tough one. Kansas City, Tacoma, Spokane. Uh, a lot of, a lot of, you know, when I hit all the, I see people getting mags. I did San Jose and no, SF. I'm coming, dude. Yeah. I'm working on a new act. I don't want to hit every fucking city quite yet. You got that right. I will be there. It's not because it's not I don't like your city. I fucking love your city. Uh huh. What about, uh, Maybe a special, you got a, a ballpark on a date? September 1st. Whoa! Okay. Netflix. Wow! Peter's jaw hit the floor. That was adorable. All right. All right. Well, geez, way to sneak that in at the end, just like a pinky in the pooper. Came out of nowhere. And like I... a pinky in the pooper, it was nice. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's exciting. All right. Tune in, folks. I mean, that's right around the corner. That'll that's August is gonna fly by, oh, and here we are. Don't remind me, bro. But you got a little time to to start uh, polishing up that uh, pissing on the street bit. So uh, <laughs> kill we, me. <laughs> no, you'll be fine. Yeah, the, the the crowd they they get it now. The, the, com- the audience is so comedy savvy; they know what's what. All right, I'm at the Comedy Connection. We already added shows, so get those tickets. We're at the West Palm Beach Improv. We just trashed it. Portland, Maine at the Aura. Uh, back with Bert in the Fully Loaded, Brandon, Mississippi. We had a makeup date. Uh, Richmond Funny Bone. Red Rocks Amphitheater with Bert. Some kind of brewing company in Baker. Uh, Terrebor. Terrembler. Terrembler? What does that say, Peters? Temblor. Oh, Temblor. Okay. It's in Bakersfield, California, it looks like. Yeah, that'll be interesting. I've never been to Bakersfield. San Jose Improv, the Danforth Music Hall in Toronto, Royal Oak, Michigan. With I'm actually with Jeff Ausmus in that one. Rockshin Theater. Just and, got past the cellar. Hey, Mazel tov. Killer comic. Great comic. We'll follow Fantasies. Jeffrey uh, Asmus on, uh, it's pronounced Ausmus, it's spelled Asmus. Yes. On Instagram. Great clips. Funny guy, Revolution Hall in Portland, a Pantage in Minneapolis, a Neptune, Vogue, Joy, uh, New Orleans, Vancouver, Seattle, Portland, Boston, Philly, Nashville. Come on by. We might be drunk. Say hello on the road. Buy a shirt. Get on the Patreon. Check out our specials. And congrats, September 1st. Thank you. So-